Howdy friends, welcome back to the House of Tone. My name is Wes Lee, I'm a professional band instrument repair technician. I started a YouTube channel to document my life in the trades. I appreciate you stopping by the shop. Okay, Slingerland Bugle, part two, let's go. All right friends, we're back on our Slingerland Bugle. I've been doing some research on this, some historical work. I'm not a huge historian, I don't know as much as a lot of people, but I, but I start going down rabbit holes and looking at things. And so I've, I've kind of got a year in mind of what this is, and that's going to be coming up probably in our next episode. It's been fun going down the rabbit hole. Today we're going to take care of the, the dents that are around the bell flare and the throat, the logoed area. This would be pretty typical of what we see except it looks like maybe a drumstick or a regular hammer was used on this. And what we see is that the flare is actually blown out. It's distended instead of going in. So they've beat on it and pushed it back the other way. Now, having a flare that is blown out or oversized really does bad stuff to the playability of the instrument. So what we're going to try to do is I'm going to try to sculpt this back and then make it round again. And of course we have to deal with the bell rim. I'm actually going to start from up here in the logo so I can get a feel for how this brass uh, works, how the working metal feels. This is about two to two and a half times the thickness of a modern horn. Uh, so I really want to see how this works, how what's, what's it doing. And then I may have to incorporate using some heat or some more uh, extreme measures to get this flare done. So that's what we're going to do today. In the old days with this, this was the original style of bell mandrel. This one was probably made, this may have been made by Eric Brand way back in the day. Free sells these now, and I just love these. However, there's something to note. Even though these look similar, the taper of the flare is different because of the modern and versus the old style. So when I set this all the way down, my flare is actually not making any contact or that throat's not making any contact whereas on this old one it is i don't know if that's going to be a thing it is a thing right now you're watching me do this so we're going through this together and that's how things work around the shop you try something if that doesn't work then you you motivate on to something else as soon as you feel like you're starting to spin your wheels there's never one tried and true way to get something done so i think we're going to use this First, we're going to set up a rod and get this stuff out and see what this metal feels like. Okay. Holy moly. <clears throat> yeah, that's real tough. Good grief. <sighs> okay. Got his name. Working around Howard right here. I'm coming right back up to this bell seam. I'm going to get this one. Softens up right there at the seam. Interesting. This is really thick. Really hard. Okay, all right, so for, <clears throat> nah, I didn't, I'm gonna grab a little punchier ball over here. There we go. That's going to be good. 
Now, even when you're working through on an old patina like this, you can still watch your light lines, and your light lines still tell you everything. You can see dents, and as you turn, you just want to make all those straighten out. That's really looking pretty good. See how it dips right in here? It can, I don't know your angle if you can tell that. But we can we can see right here on Howard's name. And see I'm pushing that back up now straight. There we go. Yeah. Come across and get a little pair. It really softens up where that where that crease is. I feel pretty solid about that. Now what I'm wanting to do here is push this back down around the mandrels. So then we can reshape the whole thing again. And this applies to modern repairs as well. You can do the same thing. It's just harder to undo bad work than do good work in the first place. Oh my goodness, this is hard. So I think as soon as I get this kind of where I want it, I'm going to use some heat. <clears throat> the brass doesn't feel brittle. It just feels really thick and tough. You know, normally I you can bend this down with my hands. I'm, that's not even feeling it for me now if we look already let's get you a, a white background you got a something to where you can see the contour mm -hmm. now you can see how I brought that contour way back into more of a straight line now so now I'm gonna heat this up and we're gonna keep working it now we're not metal smithing we're not trying to make this cherry red we're just warming this up and it's gonna it's gonna want to go back even after all these years I'm figuring this horn is probably in the 30s much easier now. Okay. Even more. That's good. So now we're going to start roughing into shape our flare.
I'm gonna use, I'm using a rubbery, the rubber side of my mallet just to make big swings and push things where I want it to be. Good deal. Now I think I'm gonna set up a roller. I'm gonna roll the rim. And then for our final, we'll go in and we'll work all of this and make the whole thing sculpt back together. But I believe that's coming out pretty good. We're, we're still a little distended here, but the majority of this is nice and straight again, back in line. So people ask how my, the shaft on my roller got bent. And it's from working on heavy stuff like this for years and years and years. And just one time, it decided that, oh, I've had enough for today. <clears throat> Being very specific to put just the parts that I want rolled under the face of the roller. And some of these other high spots, we're gonna immediately flip and go back this other way. And this is really Coming back pretty nice. I like that little bit of use of heat just helped everything out. Just and it's a lot like questions that we've gotten about compound bends and trombone slides. How do you get rid of it? Well, because your bends are going everywhere. So first thing you have to do is make everything going in the same direction. And once you have it going in the same direction, now you can work on getting it back straight. And that's what we're doing here. We're making sure that we get all of the parts of the flare going back into the same direction that we want it to go see and now we can make it all blend back together that's going to be fine it's just really uh, yeah very thick okay so let's uh set up on the dent machine normally i work from the inside to the outside but here I want to do outside to inside. I want to, This is where I have to do the blending. So I want to go ahead and take those little rim imperfections out. So I'm going to kick the wheel. So it's actually going to set like this. So I can hit just right there behind the wire. Does that make sense? Here. So you can test your, you can see where you got it. Don't let all the pressure off of your instrument, but you can see where you're going to make contact before you actually start doing any kind of damage. And you can see that we're right here behind, right here behind the wire, which is what we want. I'm not using much pressure at this point. 
This machine's got all the leverage. And it can dial up enough force to push anything where wherever I would want it to go. But I don't need to use all that force. I still want to use my hands and feel. So there's a couple of spots that are revealing themselves to me. And I'll actually get a dent hammer after those, a chasing hammer. That really looks nice. And that's one spot there, this dark brown spot. Um, this spot's even now. This spot dives in a little bit right here. So these two spots. So you just take that burnisher and Push out what you don't want to be there. There we go. Excellent. Okay. So we've got the rim back where we like it. I think I'll put it on a plate and do our final rim straightening. And then we can go after blending this area. That, that was the spot. Yep, me there. Good to go. So that will let me work from there all the way to right up to where we had done at the rim. So I like to plan everything before I actually actually do it. Looks like it's been through one of Miss Kay's murder mysteries. <laughs> There's been a murder inside this bell. Now we're going to work this area that was so badly damaged that we kind of normalized. I think that's what you call it, normalized versus annealing, if I remember correctly. Sometimes my brain works. I don't know if the video is picking it up, but I can, I'll know when I'm flat when the dents, get, they'll feel smooth, they won't feel draggy. And my goal is still to remove all of that before I start reshaping. Yeah, I can feel it coming together now. This 
is definitely one of the thickest brasses that I've ever pretty boring to watch but you just repeat and do these little sections it's not a hard formula to master just got to do it 10,000 times and then you start figuring out what to do Don't worry about being too big of a hurry. I feel pretty good about that. Look at that. Sweet. Now we're going to kind of got that where I want it. You can see where it drops down a little bit right here. But notice that the flare is all, is that a good background for that? Mm -hmm. Notice the flare is all straight again. See that? It all sculpts the way it should. Nothing's all pushed out and bowed out. So now I'm going to take this. I was doing short strokes before, just working this one inch area. Now I'm going to actually go out and make the length and make the whole thing blend together. So we'll go from just in front of, yeah, that ought to be good. And I can feel spots where it completely lets go, spots where it gets a little heavy. You don't try to take it all at one pass. That's weird right there. So I've got some stuff in the throat that's weird. Come across. Clean it up. Well, what do you think about that? That's pretty good. Really a pretty lazy flame. The steel is going to act more of a heat sink. So the brass isn't going to get too hot. Just want to kind of normalize it let the everything kind of come back to where it was no stress i'm figuring that the instrument is about a hundred years old 
90 years old. Let's read that. With a little bit of heat oxidation, you can blend the color back so that it blends in with the rest of the brass. It's another little trick. That's beautiful. It's gonna be all right. Shout out to my film crew, Ms. K. <laughs> well, thanks friends for hanging out with me today. Hope you picked up some tips and tricks on this bugle. Man, this one is beautiful. I was really worried about this work. I was afraid that it wasn't gonna come out as nice as it did. But you just, hey, you got that one lesson, you just keep learning it. Do it 10,000 times, then you're on the right road. Then you just keep on booking from there. That's it. Come back. We got another part to do. I'm figuring out how to straighten this receiver some more. We're going to have our solder joints to redo, and we're going to do the upper crook for our customer. This one will be good to go. Put it back in the wind. I appreciate you, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. This is Wes Lee, signing out.